This is the Humble 18650. That is 18 millimeters in diameter and 65 millimeters long. Therefore, 18650. These are in everything from your crappy little power banks from the supermarket to theoretically Teslas. At least it was a rumor that they were in Teslas. They are ubiquitous and uh, it's a great little power unit. I'll make another video soon with a lot more information on the 18650. We can go into depth on the different types and what their different applications might be for. So you've collected all of your 18650 cells. You've got some bad ones. You've got some really good ones. And likely you have a bunch that you don't know if they're good or bad. You might have some that are already spot welded together into packs. And like me, you might have some that are shrink wrapped and they're still in little assemblies. So what do we do with these? Well, you can try to solder them together to make packs like that, but a much better option is definitely to spot weld them back together into packs of your own design. Uh, to do that though, you need a spot welder. And that's where the sponsor of this video came in, Vivor. They sent me through their 737G spot welder, or as they call it, the Intelligent Precision Pulse Welding Machine. And uh, I'm going to be using it to make some packs and giving it a review at the same time. So this looks really similar to a lot of uh, other spot welders that are out there. I'm guessing it's all from the same original manufacturer. This one's just Vivor's one, but nothing wrong with that. If something's working well, why try and reinvent the wheel? As long as it is working well. It's got a bit of weight to it, which is nice. There's surely quite a big transformer in there. A nice Australian plug. However, it does not meet Australian standards because it does not have the insulation on the back half. Um, however, I do really like that it's upside down. So in my case, it will fit much nicer in my sockets. That is the same plug that they use in China and I think Brazil. Let's turn it on, I guess. Cool. So there's two things to adjust here without reading the manual. Um, you're going to adjust your current, how many amps you want, and then uh, your pulse, which let's just see here, double pulse wave with high energy precision welding in millisecond. So I guess it's going to be how many milliseconds it's going to pulse for. Um, two sounds pretty good. Let's go for 50 amps. Seems pretty straightforward. I don't know what this does. Welding pressure adjust. Ah, interesting. So that's, I just triggered it and I tipped it there. But this is to adjust. This would be like a set screw to adjust the springs from these little hands. Wow, my light's in here dim when it goes on. It's crazy. I guess 50 amps. Maybe we'll turn it off. It's 50 amps at a, I think, low voltage. Approximately four to five volts, 0.80. Uh, 80 to 800 amps. All right, there you go. So this is saying it's pulsing at four to five volts, meaning touching this will be completely safe. Cool. So electrodes are in, and then you want to adjust. I mean, I'm saying all this, I haven't even read the manual yet, but we all know that manuals aren't that important. Uh, adjust these so that they're close together, not touching two millimeters, uh, three millimeter gap maybe. Comes with extra electrodes, which is nice. These are just pieces of copper. I'm guessing that four electrodes will last you a really long time. Also comes with some spare fuses, the Allen key, and, oh, this is cool. A little 18650 holder. How neat is that? And some packs of nickel strips. Interesting choice of plug. It's like a DC power socket barrel plug. 
There you go. So there's obviously you can hear it bouncing in there. There's a big contactor. Whenever you click it, it knocks the contactor closed, which would connect the output from a giant transformer and dump all that power into your cells. So uh, let's test it out. Hmm, I don't think I had this cranked down enough. Let's try it with a little pressure. Wow. All right, so 90 is the golden ticket. It was coming off before, and it's because I had it set too low. On this 90 setting with this pressure cranked up all the way to maximum, this has a lot more force behind it, which is it's pushing the strip down harder. And then whenever it's it's welding it, it's hitting it with a lot more current. Uh, and that's making quite a difference. And that's rock solid now. Obviously whack a few extra little up, like that one didn't weld. That's better. Cool. So there's our first little 4S bank. Sorry, 4P. Now let's build our second 4P. Beautiful. I am fortunate enough to have a friend who has collected all of these 18650s from some warranted products at the company he works for. And there's a lot of them. These are 18650 cells already spot welded together into uh, 1S 4P packs. So it's one cell in series and then four in parallel. Uh, on all of these packs, the issue was the BMS. The cells themselves are fine. So what I'm going to do is assemble them together to make a really giant battery pack. I don't quite know the best orientation. Maybe something like this. And now if I take a third pack, going this way. So before I weld this pack together, I want to confirm that there are no dead cells here. This pack is holding voltage. 2.6 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts. I would like to match these voltages because if the voltages are too different, the 4 volt pack is going to try really hard to charge this pack. And it's going to charge it really fast, which is going to create quite a lot of heat and potentially damage these cells because if their C rating isn't very good, it might be trying to charge or discharge too quickly. So to find packs with a similar voltage will minimize how much of that charging and discharging happens. Um, this pack was reading 3.9. So let's try and find a few packs that are close to 4 volts. 3.4, 3.9, 3.9. That's a good start. 2.9. Close enough. So these are all within a few millivolts of four volts. Excellent. So now we have spot welded some little tabs across here, joining these three uh, 1S4P packs. We should be getting about 12 volts. This, that would be the normal voltage for this pack. And we're getting 11.93. Perfect. One bank, one array for my pack setup. 
But now I'm just gonna start assembling all of these. I gotta say, really happy with this spot welder. Makes such an easy job of this. Look at this compared to the, the nasty little ones I've built using a, a soldering iron. Plus the danger inside of these cells at the top, there's quite a lot of engineering. There's layers here with plastic foil, little sacrificial bits, little vent holes that come through here. Uh, and soldering onto this and heating this whole thing up can't be good <laughs> for the plastic, for the insulation, for the different kinds of engineering that go into keeping these relatively safe. So I've done it, you'll do it, but um, spot welding is definitely faster, easier, and safer. It's not like it's the safe but annoying solution. It's it's just better all around. Um, and this spot welder costs about 150 Australian dollars. So it's not that expensive if you're going to be doing this more than once or twice. Definitely invest in one of these early um, because it's just so much easier to go. So thank you for watching. Thank you, Vivor, for sending this across for me to review and hope to see you guys for more interesting battery videos in the future. Thanks. All right, halfway charged with a Milwaukee 18 volt BMS charging off a Milwaukee charger and it looks like it's working really well. Um, I've only done one, two, three, three out of the 12 cells all hand soldered instead of using a nickel strips and a spot welder which is like bad but i didn't have one i mean imagine just a casing on that and that thing goes in the bottom of your drill i put my drill on it before it works perfectly um it's basically just the biggest milwaukee battery ever pretty cool